and gentlemen, welcome to the favorite curtain for the love of love. The marathon in Beirut is something massive. It's not a, about running. Running is a part of it. Close to the event, unfortunately, the political situation is escalating. A gentleman called Nelson Mandela said, sport reaches places politicians can't. It's war against peace. So it's like, you know, you're just in between and you're, you know, you're just pushing war away and bringing peace in. And this is like the fun part. <laughs> Beirut, Lebanon. This multicultural Mediterranean city had risen again after the devastation of a 15-year civil war. More than a decade had passed since the war's end, and the city once known as the Pearl of the Middle East was returning to a relatively peaceful way of life. But in 2005, the car bomb assassination of much-beloved former Prime Minister Rafiq Hariri threw the country back into political instability. Several more assassinations followed, and throughout the city, images of the victims were posted to honor their memory. Then in July of 2006, the people found themselves yet again in a state of conflict during what came to be known as the 2006 Israel-Lebanon War. As is always the case in times of war, the civilian population suffered the loss of loved ones, home, and community, and was again called upon to demonstrate its strength and resilience. As evidenced by the vendor selling his wares amidst the bombed-out rubble, the Pearl of the Middle East has earned the right to now call itself the city that would not die. In Lebanon, endurance is an integral part of daily life. And the Beirut Marathon is not just an endurance sporting event, but a passionate testament to the love of life. My name is May Al-Khalil. Uh, I'm the president and the founder of Beirut Marathon Association. Uh, the association started in 03 and uh, it was quite a challenge at the beginning to uh, um, have a marathon in Lebanon with runners uh, uh, starting and finishing uh, a distance of 26.2 uh, miles. But I was very confident at the beginning. I was uh, working on a vision knowing that uh, this marathon will bring good things to Lebanon and it will eventually put Lebanon on the international map. And we've always introduced the three races, the 5K, the 10K and the, uh, the 42.195. And uh, we encourage people to uh, dress up in funny costumes and express themselves. Uh, sports is very much part of me, of my character, and I believe uh, it had the, helped me develop my personality and be who I am. On the 17th of November 2001, I was very unfortunate uh, that morning. I was hit by a car while training, and um, the uh, accident was quite big. I ended up with uh, broken uh, femur bones on both legs and the hips were fractured. I was uh, hospitalized for um, almost a year and a half. I was in a coma and the doctors couldn't answer whether I will uh, make it through. Um, but uh, on the fourth day when I uh, came back to life, I opened up my eyes. Uh, the first thing I said was the marathon. So what made me say this was probably my determination and I felt like, you know, things happen to us in life but we need to be stronger than life. I felt it was necessary for me to dream, it was necessary for me to have something bigger than me. I did a total of uh, 34, 34 surgeries. I was on a wheelchair for uh, a long time probably close to six, seven months. I had tremendous support by my family, my husband, my children, 
and uh, from uh, my friends and the Lebanese society. I came here via Scotland, which is my home, and then away off to China, and then to Uganda, then to Thailand, then to Japan, uh, in the hospitality, restaurants, and hotels business. And finally, having done a lot in the Far East, I got very tired, and I came here on a vacation for 10 days, and uh, my friend said, why don't you stay here? <laughs> and uh, it kind of appealed, so I came, and here I am. I was working my field uh, of hotels and restaurants, opened many, many restaurants in Beirut, and then one day I heard of the marathon. I watched with great interest and uh, the second year my wife and I watched it again. The third year we decided we'd do the 10K. So we went in the 10K and uh, we really had a tremendous time. And the next morning I was in my office uh, and my secretary said to me, uh, I was talking to her and I told her, look next year I'm going to run the marathon. So she told me, have you signed a contract? said, uh, what are you talking about? I'm going to run the marathon. She said, oh, I thought you meant run it, meaning organize it. I said, no, but that's not a bad idea. So I called a friend of mine, and uh, they put me in touch with Ney Khalil. And uh, we met the same day, and uh, I guess it was the right moment, and the right day, and uh, the right uh, mix. And we ended up working together, and here we are just over 12 months later with uh, six days to go and the energy is rising we have uh, way beyond my expectations in registration we have nineteen and a half thousand already but i think it's going to be an overwhelming number of people what are you doing with all this string we're going for to the badges yes the medical team and the volunteers they're gonna hang it neck. over their neck mm. Everything is handmade in Beirut Marathon. <laughs> Maybe this is what makes Beirut Marathon a, a unique event. So they are calling me from now on the pink guy. Well, what's the expertise? The expertise? <laughs> okay, let me tell you what's the expertise. Is to be fast in opening this silly pin that's injecting my finger. <laughs> After I will finish these two pockets, I will get my PhD in the pen. This is such a mix-up. It really represents our Lebanese politics. Look. It's too complicated. They don't know the end from the beginning. There's a chip. Uh, the chip goes on the shoes. And this one, you can put it inside the chip, under the shoelace, and in the chip again and tie it so the chip will not fall off. So all in all, they'll be equal to 8,000. And how many of these are you doing personally? Well, until they're done. Doesn't matter. We need to get it done. It's really great. Putting people together after this war means a lot to us. And this is what we usually do. We do invite people from everywhere in Lebanon and outside Lebanon and we want them to participate and to run in unity so that we can all be together no matter what even if the war is there it won't stop us because we do love this country and we're the people the Lebanese we're they're very nice people and they do deserve to live happily to enjoy their life away from this trouble that's taking place. So this marathon comes to say that we're here, let's run for health, for support, for, for our unity and uh, it's a great feeling actually. After the July war, like we didn't even expect to do the whole marathon, which is great, we are doing it, we have foreigners with us, we have people supporting the event, thank you so much. Here we are working 24-7, uh, uh, we still have a few days, the uh, registration are really piling up, we have over 23,000 participants, we have so far 56 nationalities, people are still coming to Lebanon. I don't know what it is, but there is this nostalgia about Lebanon and the Lebanese, and whenever we go through um, troubles, 
people show uh, sympathy and solidarity to the Lebanese and to, to Lebanon. We're very grateful to whoever is really trying to help us uh, get out of uh, this, uh, I would say, foggy uh, situation. And until we see the light, I hope uh, we, we all want peace. And probably next year we will run for peace in the Middle East. You will come in my country. It's about the life of the nation and restoring a sense of dignity, a sense of pride, a sense of honor in who we are. I think that Lebanon has been pounded so many times and people have the impression that the country is riddled with terrorists and if you're not careful, you won't make it out. But I sit here with the biggest mix of Shia, Sunni, uh, Druze, Christian, Maronite, Protestant, whatever you want, all in one office, all working for one common cause, which is to build the marathon, which is building the nation. And there is nothing about religion. There is nothing about politics going on. These people just want to live an awesome life. They want to do something great for their nation. And they want to change what's going on. <laughs> By the way, you know what? I'm ready over here. They took vacation from their work and they came over here to work. This is team spirit. This yeah. is Lebanon. <laughs> Come over, guys. Well, the blue line is an indication of the direction for the marathon runners. But in Beirut, with the amount of traffic and uh, cars and cars going two ways and uh, just the, literally the party atmosphere in Beirut, um, it becomes impossible to, to get it 100% right. I think the guys have done an incredibly good job. Coffee! Leave me nice and that's all delicious. Coffee! Are you doing the marathon? Yes, yes, of course! Yes? Yeah. This year too. Marathon? Good morning. Are you running in the marathon? Yeah! Have a good day. I'm in charge of the concept and execution and implementation of the Marathon Village, which is the exhibition that happens for uh, four to five days before the day of the official marathon. What I do is basically try to come up with a, a nice uh, idea, concept for this village and then try to sell it <laughs> and then try to uh, have it executed the best way possible. The, the entertainment we've set up is really interesting. We have everything from uh, conferences to children theater to artist performances to uh, cooking competitions to bands and folkloric kind of dances. We have a full program. I, I, I like multitasking. <laughs> so it's cool. Basil! Print! Print! My magic is not working. I'm at the opening, the show of the opening, it's me, I made it. I have cheerleaders with me, I have rollers, skaters, and I am the clown. And I have another clown, and a little girl, she's a clown too. And I have a Lebanese Zafi with me. It's all in the opening. So I am currently having between three and four heart attacks a day about the race. Because the Murphy's Rule says what can go wrong will go wrong. So automatically everything's going wrong. But inshallah, which means God willing, everything will go fine. Hopefully.
close to the event. Unfortunately, the political situation is escalating. Um, however, we're determined that the marathon will take place. We're working uh, uh, day and night. International runners started uh, arriving uh, to Lebanon. But internally, uh, there are lots of serious question marks about uh, uh, the uh, two different parties, the government and the opposition, who are uh, uh, trying to uh, uh, make a statement. Uh, there will be there. There are rumors that there will be some sort of a sit-in from the opposition party, and this might uh, disturb the plans of the Beirut Marathon. We're hoping that uh, miracles might happen. We're hoping that uh, they might reach to uh, some sort of an agreement before um, before Sunday. I'm looking forward to an amazing day on the 26th of November, a day that will bring people together, a day that will once again put uh, Beirut and Lebanon on the international map of uh, international marathons and races. So here we go. You know, this is how you really hurt people by killing the the people who are uh, who are not really involved and not really uh, criminals. Did you think he was just an easy target? I don't know. Maybe he did not even think that they will they will run after him because he's he's, you know, he's not a criminal. For him, it's young. <sighs> there's supposed to be here around 20 people helping, but uh, you can see there's one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight, and, you know, to 22. That's it. They all left because of what took place today. Assassination of you know, Pierre Jmail. Uh, we've been having a lot of this for the past one and a half year. But uh, there's nothing we can do about it, I guess. And I'm just gonna keep on packing the chips until race day, probably. Never give up. I think it's much better now that you postpone. It doesn't make sense to have it in the next few days. You're in for a long night. Another one. I had a TV interview this uh, this afternoon, probably a few hours before the accident. And I was uh, communicating uh, passion, energy, and optimism, and a better future, a better tomorrow. Telling people how important it is to come and participate and be part of this event. Uh, to show the world that we are united, to show the world that we are uh, a country that deserves to live. But here we are, everything is devastated, and uh, everything is put on hold. However, the Lebanese are very resilient, they're very strong people, and uh, irrespective of all what is happening, we will always be united, we will always be together, and we will continue living, and we will always seek for a better future. No more.
more clown. No more clown. No, it will be a clown, but not tomorrow. It will be in two or three weeks, maybe. Um, bye. Okay, bye. I'm always a clown. Every day. Every minute. Every week. We don't have to return back. We're always here. And we are going to see tomorrow. Not yesterday, and not today. Tomorrow it will be a big day. Not tomorrow, tomorrow, maybe after, maybe in one week. Maybe in one month, but we are here. In our, what we call this, in our legs, we'll be standing. By the turn of Beirut, it will be canceled. Who told you? No way. Why do you say no way? Because I believe in Lebanon. We are like that. We can run in the middle of the problem, in the middle of the war. I'm sure uh, it will be a very good marathon. Very, very good festival this year. You will, you will see. You will see. You will see. Unfortunately, no more marathon. No. They're going to postpone it. Okay, till when? We're eager to participate. When do you think it will happen? We'll find out soon. Good luck. I'm sick of uh, starting over. How often can you start over? It's enough. Uh, a country is a terrible thing to waste. Around for Lebanon. Greetings, one and all. Good morning. <coughs> okay, we have done the right thing. I have talked, and A has talked with many, many, many people over the last yesterday evening, and uh, getting many phone calls this morning. Just people saying, "Look, it is right to postpone." So, as sad as it is, and as difficult as it is, it's the right thing. I'd like to know what you guys are feeling, what you guys are thinking vis-a-vis -vis the marathon, uh, ideas, thoughts, comments, one at a time if possible, uh, so we can hear each person's point of view. Um, but I'd like to know what you guys are thinking, so. Nothing is uh, actually worth this man's uh, life. Uh, it's, it, it was a big loss, and uh, but life Continue. will go on. And, uh, of course, we did the right thing that to, to postpone. What if in a week from now there's uh, another thing, you know, a uh, coup d'etat or something? Here in Lebanon, we, we're used to being um, crushed and then we uh, move on again. And we get crushed and we move on again, we're used to this. So I guess it won't be a problem to just restart the whole Issue. We've already prepared a lot, we've worked hard a lot, and it's just the spirit and the mood which yeah. I think will, will be restored in a hopefully a short time. There is a need right now for something where people don't say anything political except about Lebanon. The marathon is the exact vehicle to do it. A gentleman called Nelson Mandela said, Sport reaches places politicians can't. Yes. That on a political front is what you are sitting with. You're in an incredibly powerful position with this marathon. If you postpone it to January, February, whatever, you've lost that. Not for the marathon, but for the country. What I think is better to postpone it like one week, not even two, because uh, as Nori said, we only need to just uh, take uh, take it as an advantage for us, not a disadvantage. It's more time to to recap what we what we have to do to be ready. And in one week, you know, what possibly could happen? You know, they, they just want to, to frighten us. Okay, mm -hmm. it happened. And uh, next week, they will frighten us too. No, they will probably frighten us more. Marketing. We can't predict what will happen. Right. So if anything goes, you know, it's not. We want to postpone it, or we will not. 
If we can do it, we will do it. If it's okay. next Sunday, let's do it. Why not? Okay. When I was driving home yesterday and today to work and not seeing anyone on the streets, I was... We should do something. Don't call it marathon, don't call it whatever you want to call it. Let's, you know, postponing it is like... Once again, we're waiting for a miracle to come and we'll wait. And yes, it's true, they want Lebanese, they will wait. Then they will uh, do it again. And, and even if it's not an international marathon, even if we don't have international, even if it's not uh, a true marathon, one thousand participants. Yeah, doing something and it won't be political just to live in peace. If we call it, let's live in peace. We want to live in peace. Okay. If you were to try and compare the New York marathon to what you have here, they would have to have 1.2 million runners to have an equal percentage participation as you have in Lebanon. Proportionally. Proportionately. Right? That's actual participation. Right? Now talk about the people. Every runner has a family, four or five people. Right? So this event touches such a huge percentage of people in the country. I honestly would be very upset if it was not to take place because it is not political. But I live in a movie world. I'm passionate about my sport. Two things that you haven't said. One, we postponed out of respect for somebody who was assassinated. We did not postpone because we are afraid and we did not postpone because the marathon is not tied to any single politician. I think the mood is we should do a race. Everybody in agreement, please raise your hand. One, 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 one raise your hand. One, 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 one week. We live in a real world. We live in the world where everyone from every background, gets on and lives life together. We are the people. We are real people. And that's you guys. So to stand up, rise up, make a marathon, is to make a difference and to help continue building the nation. And that's what we're here for. That's our mission. That's where we started right after the war. And that's what we're about. And that's what I want you to remain focused on. Have to work. I'm too sleepy and I'm too tired. Oh. Still doing chips. Yes, and there's still a little bit more to go. Maybe in two days this will just be complete. We say in French you wear so many chapeaus. Chapeau, you know what's a chapeau? Like a hat. In Lebanon, <laughs> uh, so many people they they wear so many hats because they have to do like maybe two jobs at a time or three jobs at a time in order to to have like really a decent living or anything so i have three hats it's not only because of the first reason it's because also i love doing the three things really so i work for the tv I am a character in a political satire show and my character is blonde on TV and she's so crazy and she want to talk politics even though she doesn't understand anything about politics. But she's like hilarious. The third thing I do also is doing drama therapy and I've been working in prisons and now in the south with the women that has been traumatized by the war. So there you are, these are my three hats. Now you're seeing me in the hat of the marathon. I'm doing good. I work seven days per week. I'm not tired at all. <laughs> and all we're doing, you know, we're doing, we're doing things and we're really, we feel that we're accomplishing, then one assassination just stops it all. But as it is today, we can't do it this Sunday, no way. So socially and politically, it's just too, uh, too desperate.
And they are a Christian. We are a brothers in our country, Lebanon. Okay, tomorrow, Bukra, uh, there are some international people who came into town and they could not change their airline ticket. So tomorrow, there will be a marathon. This marathon will start at 7 a.m. The race will leave Shal Hello and follow the track of the marathon escorted by the police in front and behind. At the finish line, we will give them a medal. We will have the finish line. Uh, we will give them uh, water, isostar and bananas and we will give them bouquet of flowers. Why? They came to Lebanon to run, but we can't give them their race. Yeah. So it's a small gesture from the marathon and uh, we will do our best to uh, let them feel that even though Lebanon sometimes it's upside down, we are hospitable people and our home is their home. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> that is it. That's it. That's that the field. The, that is the, uh, the premier. Very choice of the six. You ja never... Jackson and I appear to be the biggest guys there. <laughs> but you would never, As usual. <laughs> you would never find this in London. I'm running a marathon in, uh, in two years now. But my friends are here from uh, the UK. And uh, they were not able to change their ticket, so they're here today. So I'll be running with them. We came from the UK, we were unable to change our tickets. We're raising a bit of money for a Lebanese charity, and uh, so we thought we'd come anyway. Just to run in the hills if necessary, but I'm glad this has been organized. We're fresh from um, the Athens Marathon three weeks ago, but no, no signs of that in our legs, I don't think. So we're feeling, um, we're feeling good. Looking forward to Beirut today. It's gonna be good fun. If we didn't run the marathon this, this week, there's no way we could have come back next week because of plans so we just came anyway and I've known Max uh, since 1978 I believe although I haven't seen him for 25 years so I thought I'd come and see him in, uh, in Beirut
Why have you come to Beirut? Just to walk the marathon because it's my first and it will be my last if I finish. <laughs> and I would like to go to a special place and that's Beirut for sure. This car will be the, the water station. Uh, so you can just stop, grab water. We have Isostar, we have bananas. So you guys are well taken care of. And that'll be every 2.5K. We are timed by the Lebanese Athletics Federation. So your time will be an official time. Your time will be entered into the marathon timing of uh, oh, fantastic. Beirut this year. So you'll appear as official runners. All right? Guys, there's a blue light. You just follow the blue light. There's nothing like feeling alive Just look around the mosque and the church This is the land where God gave me life Listen to the words I'm trying to say I'm running free, I'm running free, I'm running free I'm running free Not, hasn't had enough. Look, he's going back to fetch yeah. Thank you. Well done. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank well done. You. Thank you. Thank you. Nice one. Congratulations. Hey, Jackson. Oh, I have a new side. Trust me. Three hours, 59 and six seconds. You lie like a cheap nappy watch. Three hours, 56 and six this seconds. This is the official. Uh, Lebanese Federation timing. If it has a three in front of it, I don't care what it says. So well, John, you're our official winner of the first part, part A. <laughs> I'm, it's a privilege. <laughs> and you got the oh. 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 Thank you, man. That allows you to go home with your wife and... Uh, Mark, let's yes. have a group picture. And people on the on the road recognized friendly, you. Yeah. They were, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Oh, they all yeah. shouted at him. Oh. They didn't recognize okay. me. <laughs> Next year they will. <laughs> My name is Max Shaya. I'm Lebanese. And three years ago, I challenged myself to do what's called the Seven Summits. And just this last May, I climbed the last of my Seven Summits, Everest. And now. I go around schools and universities and clubs across the country and region to motivate the young to try and convey the message that if there's a will, there's a way. So if you have a, a project in mind or a dream, you can always reach it if you work hard enough and you, if you persevere and if you're determined. I never thought in my wildest dreams that um, my project would have uh, such 
impact in, in Lebanon. Yes, I am the first one to reach the summit of Everest from Lebanon and to fly the Lebanese flag up there. But there are hundreds of people before me who've gone to the summit of Everest. But the fact that maybe in my country everything everyone sees on TV is nothing but politics, which much to my regret seems to be going around in circles uh, nowadays without concrete results. Um, what I did uh, was embraced by the Lebanese uh, very well and whether I am or not, uh, school children in particular see me as a role model in my country. It was fabulous because they made all the research about Maxim. They know everything. We went, they went through the internet, they went through all the magazines. And uh, for three weeks we made the debates about Maxim, about the patriotism, about Lebanon, about how to uh, make yourself grow your potential, be strong mentally and physically. It's wonderful for the kids and really they need somebody to look for and I hope Really, when they will see him, some of them, they will have things inside and they will go to their Everest, everyone. They will, uh, he will know which mountain to climb inside him and, <laughs> and that's it. I've been involved with the Beirut Marathon Association for quite some time, ever since it started, some three, four years ago. And I have been asked to give the start of the marathon and I feel uh, honored by that. Uh, last year it was the Prime Minister, the first year it was the President. Obviously I will not be able to run the true Beirut Marathon this year, next week, which is uh, Sunday, December 3rd, because I'll be giving the start. But uh, at least yesterday I did get, uh, get to run it and get the feeling of it. And it's always wonderful to run, especially in Beirut. We believe that this event is a sign of uh, life, joy, and happiness. So my message will be through this uh, interview to call for all the Lebanese to show up on the 3rd of December, all united, and run for the love of Lebanon, and run for peace, and for a better tomorrow. Hello. I have great news. Everything's reactivated. <laughs> شريك انت شريك بالبيت ما بخليك قوم الحقني وسبقني بالماراثون الحقني الحقني رح تسبقني لاقيني بلاقيك من هون لهوني شريك انت شريك بالبيت ما بخليك قوم الحقني وسبقني بالماراثون These boxes are going to the village. They are the bibs for the runners, the numbers. About 24,000. بالمراتون 
one of the guys behind the scenes. I am the guy who is organizing and supervising the installation of all the banners you see uh, when you watch the, the marathon. It's very complicated, very difficult. And at the same time, it's a lot of fun because you're in the middle of the street, in the middle of the night, and all cars passing by and looking at you and uh, wondering what you're doing. I'm not a sports guy, but uh, but you can really feel the spirit when you work with these people, it's amazing. Especially with Mark, he makes you feel that you really accomplished something. And the marathon itself, I think, is a 100% positive thing to work on. It is like a family. Mix FM, the official radio partner of the Blombank Beirut International Marathon. The race is on for the love of Lebanon. The Blombank Beirut Marathon will now take place on Sunday the 3rd of December. Remember, Marathon Village is open to everyone. So bring your family and friends and enjoy the great marathon feeling ahead of race day. My name is Shadi Tabib. I'm the owner and the manager of Fly Away Company. If you uh, saw all this setup inflatable giant balloons, it's made by Fly Away. And uh, the blimp, the helium Lebanese flags, or for the love of Lebanon. As soon as I see you guys, fire eaters here, we're gonna start. All right, no problem. Great, awesome. Dina Hayek is our official ambassador for the marathon. She's a young, fresh, new talent. So she's going to be singing the national anthem. If for any reason, one of these days, I stop running uh, the organization of Beirut Marathon, I might have a uh, chance in working in Saks Fifth Avenue, Lord and Taylor. I think I have the talent as well to have my own boutique. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm volunteering because I like to help people. I like the social life. I like. Uh, I like to see people smiling and uh, I like to help my country to move on. I hope it gives uh, an image to the whole world that Lebanon is civilized, not those stuff you are hearing on TV. And then I have fun too. I meet new friends, I meet uh, some good girls, uh, maybe a little more. We have been waiting for one year this marathon. Come on! 
I say to all the mothers of the world, it's a great experience because I give even the spirit to my children. I am Lebanese and my children are Italian because my husband is Italian. We ran away and I came back to let my children know the country of their mother. And this is a great experience for me to run this marathon, to say to all the people, we are here, we just not think about politics, we just not think about war, we think about to have a good spirit of life and to run for Lebanon. Why are you doing this marathon? Why? For Lebanon. For Lebanon, for freedom. To lose weight. We are trying to lose weight. Do you think this marathon is special in any way? It's always special in Lebanon. It's never dull in Lebanon. An hour ago, the statement was released by what is being called a national opposition. Now, uh, it is clear that tomorrow the opposition will be taken to the streets. They want a national unity government and they're saying they need uh, the right political representation. We talked to Hezbollah after the statement was released and they made clear the planned protest here tomorrow in downtown Beirut is only the first measure in a series of measures they will take. This protest will continue until the government of Prime Minister Fadisanura will be toppled. This is what they're saying. The government has said that uh, the opposition will have the right to actually demonstrate it's a constitutional right, but a political solution has not been reached. There is deadlock. Both sides are sticking to their positions, and the Lebanese are very anxious and are not sure what will be next. Are you worried about these latest developments? It's great to see that people are expressing themselves in a free and democratic way and I support fully every person who steps up to say what he believes and what he thinks. During the war, 20 years ago, I was in school. A bomb hit the school and uh, I, I lost my two legs. With, also with uh, three other friends of me, they also lost, lost their legs and two died. It was a war, crazy war. We're still looking for peace. Politicians are here crazy. We are living in uh, unstable situation. The marathon is Sunday and we are not sure if, you are, if it's, it's going to be a marathon on Sunday. In Europe and in the States, the marathon is something uh, usual. But here we are fighting to do a marathon. We are fighting to have fun, to fight for the marathon, to fight for the peace, for life, for love. That's the fight that we like to do, to challenge our disabilities. As we said in, Lib in Lebanese, inshallah, it means uh, we hope Sunday in the afternoon I can see you. I told you that we did it and uh, we managed to reach our dream. Are you leaving? Yes, of course, yes. Why? Because of the situation in Lebanon. In Lebanon, there is no stability. And unfortunately, that's the situation. We work hard, but suddenly something will happen and everything will be stopped. This country is for all the Lebanese, Muslim and Christian. I think at the end, we, we all are people. And uh, I'm talking to the leaders, all the leaders, without exception, all the leaders. Stop being uh, ego and uh, keep your ego at the door and think about your people, think about the Lebanese. Do you think a lot of people are going to show up today? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Are you afraid? Me? From what? Actually, there is nothing that uh, can let us to be afraid. Uh, what's going on outside? Does it mean to be afraid, you know? Actually, they are not there to uh, let the people feel uh, fear. So that's it, and we will run while they are sitting there. Despite what's, uh, what's happening today, the gathering, uh, we're still gonna go with this, uh, no matter what. We have the right to live in peace and to work for peace, even if there is no peace. But, we, but if we're all going to just give up, then uh, 
this is sad, then we might as well just leave the country and let it all rotten. But we don't want to do that because it's a beautiful country, beautiful culture, very nice people, very hospitable, and they have a big heart despite all the wars, despite all the differences. They want us to fight together, but we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna use our flag and our mouth to speak. And Lebanon is not the land of uh, where people settle their differences. Uh, they can settle it somewhere else. They're probably in hell, but not here. See? Due to the current situation and the demonstration and all the... Are you running in the marathon? Yeah, yeah because like it's after the war and like if you run it shows you're not like afraid of the, you know. Yeah, it's fun, really. Yeah, it's good to run. Yes, why not? <laughs> Probably, yes. So it depends on the situation. This is the problem. Yes, yes. yes. sure, sure. Sure, sure. Yes, because we love it. These mountains are the whole story. These are the marathon. You know, all the runners are inside these boxes. That's it. I'm still free, eh? Uh, available. <laughs> available, eh? All you ask guys, Daniel is still available. No, but not For more really. information, Shut 961. Up. That's my, my daughter, this is me, and this is a German guy that likes it too. Tomorrow you will see how different people can live together. And this is what the marathon will prove. We want to prove to the world that, uh, that is Lebanon. although what's happening, uh, the Lebanese people will uh, show that they are uh, they're, they're, they're going to stand for the for the country, uh, especially in a very democratic and a very uh, sporty spirit. We don't have much time. We just have probably eight hours, maybe or so, until the race begins. A lot of people came today. We have around 21,000 and above. It's more than last year. The marathon is the only day that uh, everybody gathers from all nationalities, religion, sects, anything. And uh, just like Mother Earth holding us all, the marathon would hold us all. Now I gotta pack and go. Pack and go. The Beirut Marathon Association would like to thank each and every single person who made the Marathon Village 2006 a success. We will see you again next year, hopefully. Good night.
ready for the second time in a week. I'm feeling good. Beautiful, uh, beautiful day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, second one of these in eight days, and uh, luckily this time I didn't have Max to slow me down. So uh, he's a little old. He should concentrate a little bit more on running, less on climbing Everest, and maybe he could keep up with me. But I'm good. I'm good. We are so tired. 
24 hours. Work non stop. It was good, it was nice. <laughs> We're proud of it. Tired! It's over finally! We did it! And we've been running all day, we've been doing our own marathon as a staff. I'm numb right now, I have nothing more to say, but we did it! For the love of Lebanon, finally! This is me ecstatic. <laughs> Worked out beautifully. Can you believe it? I can walk. I won! First, first the place, push him! <laughs> First the flash push him. Congratulations! Thanks. And see you next year. We hope it will be a better situation and many more uh, runners. Bye! Bye bye! <laughs> I'm so proud about the way the Lebanese performed today. It was about bringing people together. It was by any standard an international race. Argentina. The Czech Republic. Oklahoma and the States. Jordan. France. With sports, through sports you can move mountains. And I think what we did today, it was we moved mountains. We didn't move the mountains to destroy, it was bringing the mountains together. And it was beautiful. Keep going Lebanon! Keep going! The Lebanese people were united in the marathon. Whether they were uh, from opposite sides, but they were running for Lebanon. We Lebanese, we, we want to live in peace. We don't want anybody to interfere with, with, with us. And we can live in peace. We are here, we are living, and we will live forever. That's what uh, it meant to, to me, the marathon. Because of the political situation, I think it was excellent. I think that we passed the war, then the assassination, then the demonstrations, the postponement, and by all reports we turned out an excellent race. Yeah, it's crazy! The demonstrators uh, stayed in their demonstrating place. The uh, extremists did not do anything extreme. The safety of the people, which was really my biggest concern, uh, was paramount and it was safe. It was done professionally and it was done with heart and passion and that's what it takes to make it go on. People found in the marathon uh, uh, a breeze of hope maybe and it made them create a new reality for their country. Oh, 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 yes! It was an important thing that happened. It was important. There was Shia, Sunnite, Druze, Maronite, Greek Orthodox. Every single one of 18 religions was represented. Every political party was represented. The great nation of Lebanon was represented. You think the day went well yesterday? Yeah, despite all the things that have been going on, it was peaceful, it was calm, and even the people that came from abroad, they were happy about it. And I was glad to see them there as well. They're not afraid, they're getting uh, positive feedback, and uh, they're enjoying it. My thoughts on uh, some of the international TV and on their lack of interest in uh, sharing the good news of the Beirut Marathon. I think those media people should ask themselves serious questions because they have become so diseased with the passion to share bad news because bad news sells. All of the people outside the Middle East think that uh, it's, a, it's a battle zone here. It's not. It's very peaceful, it's very quiet. There are things that go on, yes, of course, and so as in other, every other country. It's very rare to turn on the news and you hear good news. Marathons are good news. News is when a group of people dedicated to their cause overcome all the obstacles put in front of them and do something great for their nation.
But after all, once it comes to sports and organizing sports, it's better than anything else. Anything else. It was a clear space and, and a clear circle and a, and a maze of darkness. I think that's that the impact it had on the people here. Uh, at the end of the day, the marathon is a celebration of life. It's a celebration of unity. I think Lebanon is a better place for the marathon. Mix FM. Guam Beirut Marathon 2007. Race day, November 18th. Hey, John. Hey, good morning. I'm back. For the third time in less than a year. Why? Why? Well, we're in Beirut. We love it. What, what can go wrong? Nothing. I'm brown and free. I'm running free.